Hi, can we go back to December and pretend I'm not making these middens in summertime? No, but actually, I'm trying to make middens inspired by Taylor Swift's folklore cardigan. Her merch store for Christmas once had an oven mitt with a pattern a couple years ago, but it hasn't come back since. If you want to buy something from her store, go for it. I just thought I could make these. Also, I have lots of this shitty yarn laying around, so why not? Warning, these aren't actual oven mitts, just cheap plastics, so you'll probably burn your hands off if you put them in an oven. Uh, don't do that, yeah. But that's my unneeded disclaimer for the video. This isn't a pattern tutorial video. What I did was take two patterns and put them together. I will be showing you my tips though and any problems I face, but if you want specific details, look at the actual two pattern. It's Let's Get Knit Face Cable Kitten Mitten and Lion Brand's Folklore Cardigan Pattern. They're both free. I started out with a cable knit and mitten pattern. I cast on using a long tail cast on which was not a great idea because it wasn't very stretchy. Knit up in ribbing and did the increases according to the let's get knit face pattern. I skipped the color switch portion because I didn't have any black yarn but you could do that too. I've done the cable mitten pattern before and it was great. I had done it in the smallest version the first time but because I'm using a different weight yarn this time around, I did the largest version of the pattern. I also have very small wrists so keep that in mind. At this point, the game plan was to constantly switch between the two patterns. I used the cable mitten pattern for the structure and lion brand one for the design. I made the decision on which side would be the front versus the back. So two double pointed needles were the front and two would be the back. Pictures online of the actual folklore mitt showed the center cable and a regular cable. So that's what I tried to do. One big difference I made was the cable mitten pattern used knits in between the stitches, but looking at the original mitt, it looked like they used pearls, so I did that instead. Also, the oven mitt had a bigger size cable, but I knew I didn't have enough space for that, so I did a mini one instead. Another thing was that it seemed the Lion Brand pattern was knit flat, but I was working in the round, so instead of following the even number rows, I did the opposite for those, so if it said to knit, the next stitch I did was a purl, but only for the even number rows. I did not adjust the size of the design parts of the pattern. I worked over 14 stitches for the center cable and 4 for the narrow left cable. This was actually more than half of the total stitches for the mitten, so if you need to make yours a bigger size, keep that in mind, it would be tricky. Doing the design portion divided over two double pointed needles was difficult to handle. I kept getting gaps, so later on I transitioned all the front stitches onto a longer double pointed needle. For the back portion of the mitt, I just kept doing plain old pearls. I basically just kept knitting up, switching between the two patterns. On row 5, I started to build up the thumb gusset, again following the let's get knit face pattern, except instead of the knit front back for the increases, I did a pearl front back. So these increases continued in pattern until row 15, at which point I put the stitches on hold with scrap yarn for later. I always suck at this and end up getting holes, but that's a problem for later me. Okay, what I have to do is do a purl and then a knit all the way down. And so I would end on a knit. So let's do that now. So taking my needle, I'm just situating this one on top. For these four stitches, I'm doing the moss stitch, so I'm going to purl first. Purl. Knit this one. Purl this one. And knit this one. Same for the next four. Put this on top. Move it over. Parallel this. Knit. the last one so I'm ending on a knit. And 
for these three stitches I have to do the 2-1 RPC which I don't remember what that is so let me come back so I slip two stitches and then I put them in the back and I knit the knit the one and purl the two so I slip these two stitches I'm using a, another knitting needle because I don't have a cable needle slip those two, put them in the back knit this one then I can take these purl these two purl two stitches, that's what it says struggle to pull these two. Oh my goodness. Maybe it is, I don't know. That's what it is. Then I have these four stitches which make up the cable. So what I do is I purl this one. And at this point I'm starting another cross. So I'm going to knit this one and then knit the one that I just crossed over That created a cross now and oops, I just dropped my last stitch And for this one I just purl it For this um, thumb portion, I've increased as much as I need to, so I actually need to put these on hold. And I have a separate piece of yarn and a needle. So I'm going to thread this and just cast off these 11 stitches, I think. Maybe it's 9, maybe it's 11, I don't know cast these off for now as I continue with the body up until the stitch marker Just gonna tie off. Now I'm going to disregard the stitch marker and disregard these um, stitches on hold and I'm going to join it like that but I actually have to cast on three stitches. That's what the Let's Get Knit Face pattern called for. So I'm disregarding this. I'm just gonna cast on my previous way, no long tail. Nothing. That's three. Now I'm going to purl these together. Just purl the whole way down to the beginning. And get back to it. 
I'm gonna keep this tight so there's no gap. Less of a gap, probably. And this is the last row to the start. This is where I actually stop. I still have three stitches on my needles, but I'm using the those as part of um, this um, center cable pattern. I just we have to reorder them. So this is where I stop this row. Now let me clean it up a little bit and then put these stitches where they actually belong on this. Um, needle instead. And at this point, this is where I would start row 16. So row 16 for whatever um, the center cable is, for the um, narrow cable as well, but really what I do for the even number rows, because they're knit, the actual pattern is knit flat, I would instead do the opposite of whatever they say because I'm still knitting on the front. I'm not knitting this flat. Um, but yeah, that's it and I'll just keep going. And basically I just continued on with a line brand pattern. I did the full 24 rows to finish the whole center cable. Then with the try-ons it seemed I was halfway through. I think I messed it up somewhere around row 10 though, and I was too scared to go back and try to fix it, so yeah, super bummed about that. But I fixed whatever it was on the second time around. For the next center cable, I repeated the same steps I had done for rows 1 to 20. At row 15 of the second one, I started the decreases though, and this was a struggle, so I'll get to that in a bit. But yeah, I almost did two full center cables for the length of this mitten, and it fits perfectly. Just a word of caution, I found the center cable part of the lion brand pattern especially confusing. Not because they wrote it wrong, it was just hard to do, and so many variations of different things. Even as I was finishing up, I would constantly have to go back to the instructions and never really got a hand of how the twists exactly work. The little narrow left cable gave me no trouble though. But anyways, I wouldn't recommend this pattern if it's your first time doing cables at least first try out how to do the stitches beforehand before actually starting the mitten another point i wanted to mention about the design was the moss stitch in between the center cable the line brand pattern didn't really explain how to do it every youtube video confused me even further even though it's really not that confusing you basically alternate the stitches knit purl in a single row but work the same stitch on top of each other for two rows. So in a column, you'll have two knits together, then two purls. And I think it looks pretty cool. For the decreases, I went back to the Let's Get Knit Face pattern. That called for four decreases each round, alternating between a right and left leaning. And because of the design pattern, this was rough to work around. I picked four decrease points around the pattern. One right before the center cable, two between the center cable and the narrow left cable, three after the narrow left cable, and four on the back of the plain pearl side in between the two double pointed needles. I was getting to the end and feeling tired, so I didn't strictly follow this. I started with a pearl two together and then a slip slip pearl and so on. I did that for about six or so rows until I only had a couple stray stitches left then cut a long section of my working yarn and use a tapestry needle to thread it through the remaining stitches. I tightened these up and weave the leftover yarn back and forth to secure this before weaving it through the top hole. I then moved my focus onto the thumb and the stitches left on hold, cut the scrap yarn there and transfer them back onto my needles. I referenced the Let's Get Knit Face pattern once again to build it up and measured it against my actual thumb. I repeated the tapestry needle steps once I had enough and tried to use some of the working yarn to cover up the holes I had made previously when leaving space for the thumb. And that's it. Again, it's not a real tutorial, but I've never mixed patterns like this before, so I'm really surprised this worked out. I hope you liked the result as much as I did. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.